Today I'm gonna make some homemade vanilla as Christmas gifts and I wanted to make a video to show you how because it's super easy whether you're making it for yourself or making it for Christmas gifts. I have been making a lot of stuff lately and I kind of feel like uh, a little kid just making a mess, just got stuff in bottles sitting and, and waiting for it to be ready whether that's tinctures or some vinegar or uh, some vanilla. So I've already got some and I just put this in an old maple syrup bottle. It works really good for that. Uh, there's different bottles that you can put this in we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute but this has been going for about a week and look how pretty that is isn't that beautiful how brown it already is it turns brown very quickly honestly within like a day it will turn brown first before we get into making the vanilla it's really easy i want to talk about christmas gifts so first and foremost christmas is about jesus it's about celebrating the birth of jesus christ it's about being with your family celebrating each other being grateful and thankful for what you have and if you're like us it's about cooking big and eating a lot of good food but for the most part, you're gonna spend money on someone for Christmas. They're probably gonna spend money on you for Christmas. People are gonna exchange gifts. So I'm big on gifts that are very useful and very practical. I would rather get someone toilet paper, uh, paper towels, laundry soap. I would rather get them something like that than get them a shirt that doesn't fit or that they don't like or get them something to set on their shelf that they really just don't like and get rid of two weeks later. I would rather get someone something that is really useful and I like to receive really useful gifts. So I try to be thoughtful and consider what I'm buying people where they use this and with the vanilla so say you give this to someone and you probably won't find out because they're probably not going to tell you even if they don't use it because they're like oh I don't really bake a lot they probably have a parent who does a sister a brother a cousin an in-law and it would be a really nice gift for them of course vanilla is very shelf stable so it's going to last a long time in other words it's not like giving someone a shirt and then they can't really regift it because it's not the right size or something like that handmade gifts of course are always the best it really shows someone that you care and they're just really nice it's also very cost effective if you're having to buy for a lot of people making something in a, in a batch in a big batch is really pretty cost effective and it's just easier it takes out the guesswork of like getting get in a lot of people like a dozen or half a dozen people or more some people have really big families and having to try to individually buy something for everyone if you make stuff like this in batches it just makes it a lot easier for me, I thought this was a great idea when I realized, hey, I could make this vanilla for my family, not just for myself. I'm, like I said, a very practical person. I would say very frugal. So much so that my father-in-law mentioned that in his speech to me at uh, my wedding. I was extremely honored. I thought that was a huge compliment, just to be clear. So let's make this vanilla. As I was looking up to find recipes for making vanilla, I realized they're all pretty much the same. You just need vodka and vanilla beans. Of course, you need a container of some kind. But the recipe that I ended up going with was one that Pioneer Woman put out. She's really, really cool. So I'll leave the link to this exact uh, recipe in the description. The big thing that you need to figure out is your ratio. And she lined it out perfectly. That's why I like this recipe. So she said six beans per eight ounces of vodka. So that means you could use nine beans for 12 ounces of vodka or 12 beans for 16 ounces of vodka. So you could use another alcohol besides vodka but i wouldn't and she didn't suggest that either because what will happen is the vanilla will take on that flavor of whatever alcohol so if you use rum it might make something really nice but it might also taste really weird because you'll taste the rum more than you do the vanilla so i think it's better to use just use a vodka that is just no flavor uh this is just a hundred proof uh vodka that i got at the store it was not the cheapest, not the expensive, just kind of middle of the road, and I use this for tinctures as well. The other thing, of course, that makes the biggest difference is the type of vanilla beans that you use. Now, there's three main types of vanilla beans, Madagascar, Mexican, and Tahitian. There's probably more than that, but those are the three main types. Now, Madagascar vanilla, that's what we're used to seeing in the store. That's what most vanilla that you get is made out of. So that's definitely the ones that I went with, and that's what she suggested too. She even said that she tried some of the other vanilla beans and really just didn't care for them. You also have what's called grade A beans or grade B beans. They're just used for different things, but she suggested grade B beans, and I did some research and pretty much everyone said grade B was better for making vanilla extract. 
you want to kind of give some thought to what container you're going to make it in. So I am I want a large quantity, so I'm going to make it in these two jars, and then I have another pint jar. But when I'm done with those, I'm going to put it in one of these. So this doesn't have a stopper in it, but it's got a really small hole there. You don't want to be trying to pour vanilla out of a, like, regular mouth or wide mouth jar like that because you really only need it in teaspoons at a time and that would be pretty difficult. That's why I saved this maple syrup bottle because it has this narrow opening up here. I like too that it's tall so you don't have to cut the beans in half but you can totally cut them in half. It really does not matter. It's not going to affect how your vanilla tastes in the end but it's nice to save these. You could save these of course for all kinds of stuff but you can use those. You don't have to buy anything specific to make this vanilla. The reason I bought these containers is that I want to make enough vanilla for Christmas for people to where I can gift maybe 15 or 20 people 4 ounces of vanilla. So I did go ahead and buy these so that way I could uh, have them to gift to people. Pretty much just going to open up the beans, expose the beans on the inside and put them in the jar and pour the vodka over. Pretty simple really. Man, I wish you guys could smell this through the computer because this smells so good. I had really never seen a vanilla bean before. And they, they're they kind of odd looking almost. They're kind of greasy. I guess I didn't expect that. But they smell so good. But the beans are, the little beans are actually on the inside. So I'll cut them open and show you. So what you want to do here is we're going to slice this bean open because the little bitty beans are on the inside and that's what we want to expose so the alcohol can get to it and extract the vanilla out. Uh, you can do it with a pair of scissors, that's what she suggested, or you can do it with a knife. You know, it's kind of tricky but not too bad. And once you split it down the middle see all those little beans they're tiny and there's just a bunch of them in there and that's what we want the alcohol to pull out she also said if you want you can cut it all the way up to this top and leave that top intact uh, so I guess so maybe it'll be prettier in the jar but again it doesn't really matter you're just wanting to expose as much of the surface area here as you can I'm gonna cut a bunch of these and then I will meet you back here and we'll get them in the jar. I would go ahead and pull these apart. You could probably leave them together because you're going to shake the bottle every once in a while and that will get that alcohol all the way up into all the spots. But if you separate them out, It'll just make, again, more surface area, expose these little beans even more so the alcohol can get to them and extract it out. I've got all my beans ready to go in the jars. These are 24 beans, both of these piles, and this one is 12 beans. So I'm not really gonna have to worry so much with these jars because these are tall because they're quart jars. I think one of those fell over there. So they fit in there quite nicely. Get the other ones here. Guess I could have done that a better way, but this works. <laughs> All right, there's that one. Then we've got our 12 beans for the pint jar, but we're going to have to cut these. These are too tall to fit in there, and that's no problem. We'll just cut them in half. And you could also put these in an 8-ounce jar. If you don't want to make this much at one time, put these in a little 8-ounce half pint jar, and that would be fine too. And now comes the easy part, which is just pouring your alcohol over. I'm going to take this all the way to the top, right where the shoulders start to come up to the thread of the jar here. 
maybe a little more, about right there. You want to leave maybe a little bit of room so that way you can shake it. I love these old jars. I like that one too, but these two are my favorite, especially this Atlas one because they're old. And to me, there is nothing prettier than something sitting in an old jar, whether that's green beans or something that you've canned that you're gonna eat or something like this that's in the making or something that you're fermenting, whatever it is. I like to see jars with stuff like this on my counter. Gonna have to open up the next bottle here. Okay. I'll keep going. This is a completely new skill for me. I've never made vanilla. I made the first batch, but that was just about a month ago. I had never made it before. Mom had a friend who one year made her some for Christmas, and I always thought, oh yeah, I want to try that. And that's been a couple years ago, so I was pretty excited to try this, especially when I found out how easy it is. And most of the time when you buy vanilla at the store, it's imitation, which is not good. It's probably full of nasty stuff because it's not real. But this is totally real and it's so easy because it's two ingredients beans and vodka got that one a little bit fuller than i anticipated but that's okay now we'll get the lid on them and that's all there is to it i will go ahead and give these a shake just right off the bat And you can already see, see all those little beans floating around in there? Give this one a little shake here. And this one. Now, one thing you want to do for sure, whether you write it on the top or you write it down in a notebook that you have somewhere, you want to put the date that you made this because this is going to need to set about two months for that alcohol to really pull the properties out of the vanilla. So you want to be sure when you did it so you know how long to let it set. You want to set these just in the back of your pantry somewhere. You don't really want to expose them to any sunlight or any kind of heat that could mess with what's going on in here. Just leave them on a shelf somewhere. Uh... And you want to shake them when you, when you can, when you think about it. You don't have to shake them every day, but I would shake them at least, I don't know, two or three times a week, just whenever you think about it. So there you have it. That's how you make homemade vanilla. It's really pretty easy. It makes great Christmas gifts. Comment below and let me know what you think if you've ever made vanilla yourself. As always, thank you for watching. God bless you and keep you, and I will see you on the next video.